everyone. I'm Uzma Burlasker, co-founder and CEO of Pattern EQ. Pattern EQ is an analytics software that aims to simplify data science and make it accessible to everybody. Data is the new gold. In the new data-driven economy, every job will require data analysis, and companies that empower their employees to easily mine this data will be the ones that succeed. But today, there's a data divide inside companies between people who have the skills to mine data and everybody else who's on the sidelines and is scared by the deluge of big data coming their way. They can ask a question, but then they need a data engineer to collate the data and clean it, and then data scientists to analyze and build the models, and then programmers to implement those models, and finally, they can have insights. Especially if you're a small company, it can be prohibitively expensive to even hire data scientists, engineers, and set up this pipeline. From question to insight, it can take several weeks. Compounding this problem is the fact that today all our data is fragmented across multiple services. Analytics data and mixed panel, payments data in Stripe, and so on. Data is in silos. And it's only going to get worse as we embrace more and more services in the future. I face the same problem as a product manager working in a video advertising company. I had a simple question, what factors influence video viewing rates, and I couldn't answer it myself without going through this tedious and broken and slow process. That's when I decided to start Pattern EQ, to empower everyone with data science skills. Pattern EQ connects to all your different services to give you a unified view of your data and allows you to extract patterns out of it automatically. Let's show you how we do it. Switch to the demo, please. The data we have here is from a music subscription service called Nino, similar to Spotify. Pattern EQ integrated with all their different data services to bring in their payments data, their marketing channel data, their social engagement data, analytics, and so on. Imagine I'm an analyst at Nino, and I'm looking at this 360 degree view of all my customers. Now, I have a question, given that Nino is a music subscription uh, company, uh, what factors influence subscription status? It's as simple as me selecting that column that has the subscription status of each individual and clicking on the predictions button. What happens behind the scenes is Pattern EQ finds all the factors that influence subscription rate and builds a model for you. It picked up about eight factors from about 30 uh, signals that we were collecting. So the top factor that Pattern EQ found was Facebook engagement of users with musician pages is a top indicator of whether that in, uh, user would, is going to stay with Nino or not. The more you engage, the more likely you're going to stay with Nino. The second factor it found was the number of playlists you create is also a critical indicator. And the third factor was coupon usage. If you use a coupon and sign into Nino, you're very likely to cancel your service. So using insights from this model, now I can let my marketers improve their targeting on Facebook, give feedback to my product team, and tell them to uh, improve the playlist creation service and also rethink my pricing structure. But that's not all. Using this model, you can actually predict who's going to cancel in the future. This model was created using last quarter's data, so I'm going to use this model on this quarter's data to predict which of my subscribers are going to cancel. It's as simple as uploading the test data on this. And what Pattern EQ does is use this model to score every customer regarding their likelihood to leave Nino. As you can imagine, this insight can be super powerful because you can reach out to customers who are likely to cancel via a marketing campaign or email or even call them to understand why they would like to cancel the service. So as we see now that Pattern EQ pulled up, uh, on the left you see the prediction probabilities. Let's sort it so that we find the ones who are at risk. So these customers have only a 0.35% probability of staying with Nino. So Nino should better reach out to them. So I looked at how I can build a predictive model using Pattern EQ. I'm an analyst, so I want to take a look at the data in a different way. So if we look, go back to the data, so I want to find groups of people who behave similarly. Again, it's as simple as we click on the segments button, and what Pattern EQ does is behind the scenes, it clusters all these people on dimensions that are similar. So as you can see, it picked up a few uh, clusters, and on the right side, it also tells you the features it picked. You can even turn off these features. For example, I already know about the Facebook behavior and playlist created, so let's turn those off and refresh those segments. So Pattern EQ turns to the data again 
to create, again, a multidimensional model, uh, not including those two. So again, a new set of uh, clusters came up. So I'm interested in the big green one, so let's click on that. So if you scroll down, it actually shows you how this group is similar. So all of their music sharing behavior is very similar. There's 92% similarity. And when you scroll up, you even see what that behavior is. So the blue bar tells you about this group's behavior and the black bar about the rest of the population. So this group is very likely to use P2P networks for sharing music. So as you saw, it was super simple to use this tool and get insights that typically require a data scientist. We are available as a SaaS service and we start at a very affordable rate of $1,000 per month that increases based on your volume. Yesterday, we launched our private beta at TechCrunch Disrupt, and we are excited to invite you all to experience the power of data science yourself by signing up for our beta access at beta.patterneq.com. Thank you. All right. Great job. Uh, one, one last conflict note. Uh, Sequoia is an investor in Agile One, which is a potential competitor. Uh, all right, to the judges, what do you guys think? Sure. So for a typical, what's your typical customer, what's your typical target, and what do they already have installed, what have they already adopted? Yeah, so the target market for us are small and medium businesses who don't have the resources to employ a data scientist. Uh, so we are focusing, even within small and medium businesses, we are focusing on a particular uh, sector, which is uh, SaaS companies, and going in with a very specific use case, helping them to do predictive customer analytics. Uh, so usually the way they do it is probably use Excel to do a few of these things. Uh, sometimes they also hire a consultant to help them do some predictive analytics. But in most cases, they really have no, no experience or no uh, exposure to predictive analytics. And, and how do you get them to input the signal then? Because they must be collecting signal from somewhere. So how do you help them do that? Yeah. So you can upload CSV files or you can connect uh, us to your mixed panel, KISS metrics, or Stripe data sources, and we pull in the data ourselves. Who's the Who's the key decision maker in these companies that you're basically selling to? Yeah, in, uh, these companies are really small, so usually it's the CEO. Uh, sometimes it also could be the VP of marketing, um, and sometimes, very rarely, it could also be the VP of uh, sales or customer success, but usually it's the CEO because they understand the value of a product like this. Is this a pure paid product, or are you giving away some of this initially so people can try it out? Uh, sorry, I couldn't follow you. You have to pay right up front, or can you come in and, and try uh, out the service first? Yeah, it, there's a 30-day free trial. I think the visualizations are really nice, and the ease of use uh, is great. I guess one question I have is, it seems like it's a logical extension to things like a DSP or any advertising platform, because I think that the way you use this is to analyze the data, figure out how to use it to make the best use of your marketing, budget, so what will set you apart and cause people to use your service as opposed to using a service that gets un ends up getting bundled with, say, ad buying? Uh, there's some equal, so I couldn't follow your question. Let me rephrase what I understood. So uh, you're asking if other tools like ad products could bundle this in versus us being a standalone product? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are addressing a lot of different use cases. It's a very generic tool, so you know, to be, uh, today you could be asking, what's uh, the predicted email conversion rate. Tomorrow you could be asking what's the predicted uh, customer churn rate. Uh, whereas in ad products, there's a very specific use case. Uh, also, what we've built is so specific, it's focused on predictive analytics. Unless it's a really large company that focuses on investing in a product like this, it's gonna be hard. Because what we've done is, behind the scenes, there's an automated data scientist sitting. Uh, it's, it's a model. And even without you telling them anything, it figures out from the data itself what model to pick. So that itself, we're focusing so hard on just figuring out the predictive analytics piece and making it extensible to every use case, so it's harder for somebody to replicate it. So, sorry, Dave, go ahead. So within the SMBs, is there a particular industry that you're gonna focus on first, in terms of going after a particular set of customers and solving their problems? Yeah, we are focusing on software as a service companies, uh, especially B2C uh, companies within that. Uh, because they have a lot of uh, customer oh, yeah. data and they want to understand more about the users. And churn, especially for early companies, is a big problem. So they could use predictive churn uh, analysis to stem uh, customer churn. Okay. So what I was going to ask is, uh, generally speaking, when you pull data from a lot of sources and you know, try to allow for visualizations, the queries get extremely slow, especially if you want to toggle and you get curious. How do you solve the speed issue? 
Yeah, um, so we are always innovating and trying to use the best technologies. Uh, right now we are testing out Spark on the back end, uh, which is a real-time distributed uh, infrastructure. So we've had good results with that. Uh, we also are testing out if there's something else that we could use in terms of in-memory in computing. Um, so we would be continuously testing out new platforms to improve that, but that's definitely a concern. I, that I think Spark is great. We have a company that we invested in that's built on top of it, so it's perfect. <laughs> and so um, a lot of times when you're trying to aggregate across systems, you, you build templates or use cases that's like, oh, but this is for customer acquisition or what have you. And um, a lot of times as people start to dig in and get more sophisticated, they say, oh, I'd like to just see one more part or just a little bit more. And is there a way for people to dig in and get more sophisticated, or are they just hit a floor in the, in the templating? Yeah. We want to enable that. Right now, we're building it in layers. The first layer has only two levels of analysis. But we see that people would want to do more, especially as they become power users. So we would build that in into the product. It's not right now that we've built it, but that's definitely part of the plan. More questions? Can you give uh, some uh, examples of this being used successfully? You know, like plugging in this data and then so-and-so customer was super happy because they observed that they saved X percent somewhere. Because yeah. with this sort of thing, it's sort of hard. Like, it looks really cool. I don't know how it works. And so I'm just, whatever yeah. you tell me, I'm just like, oh, okay. So yeah. do you have examples? Yeah, uh, actually, when we were kind of figuring out a product market fit, we did a number of different pilots in different industries. We did one for retail, actually. Um, and there, they had this co company that had a lot of uh, shoe stores across the uh, nation. And they had collected like 300 dimensions for each uh, shoe store. And they couldn't use Excel or any other tool to actually figure out. They wanted to know how to kind of group them together so that similar stores have similar uh, you know, kind of buying patterns. So they wanted to take some marketing actions based on that. And they weren't able to do it. So using our tool, we were able to bring in all those uh, stores that behave similarly based on a number of different dimensions, based on you know, uh, their competitive pattern, how many customers they have, um, the socioeconomic uh, makeup around the store. So they were super happy with that because they couldn't really do it any other way. Um, so that was one cool example that we had. Of course, there's the other ones, which are more kind of uh, you know, day to day customer churn. If you solve that, I mean, customers are super happy, right? Because uh, you're helping them stem uh, customer loss. Any more questions? How much, how much service do you have to deliver to make your customers successful? So we have built it in a way that it's self-service. During our pilots, we figured out that it's very important for us to make it self-service. Otherwise, we become a services company trying to kind of you know, uh, customize it for each customer. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to our go-to-market to be small and medium businesses and also a SaaS. So, uh, and on top of that, figuring out, uh, basically integrating with data sources, with, which are services. So that really constrained the problem and helped us become more self-service. As we grow more, our goal is to um, add back into the product in a way that it can always be a self-service product. We don't want to go the services route. All right, any more? We're good? All right, that was Pattern EQ. Thank you guys very much.